After the inevitable crumbling of the production at Studio MAPPA, the Blu-ray of Jujutsu Kaisen has blessed us with a revised version of Season 2 Episode 17. And not to waste your time, the animation is absolutely f***ing ridiculous. But I do have a couple critiques here and there. So let's go scene by scene and analyze the animation of what was missing in the original version. I guess we can start here. We have a showdown between Sukuna and Mahoraga. As you can see, they're floating in the air like absolute chads. This scene doesn't contain much movement aside from their hair and clothes. Their hands and toes are just still frames but this was done very purposely, basically to showcase how hard they are. Hold on, pause. But I really love this style of minimal shading with a lot of detailed line work. There's something very stylistically pleasing about the shot that is difficult to pin down. Then right after the subtle stillness, we get straight into an insanity of a sequence. If you were to go frame by frame, you will notice that the animators were not afraid of going off model with either of the characters, turning the scene into an absolute smoothness masterclass. Just look at Sukuna's head. It's completely indistinguishable. Perfectly placed smears are also visible with minimal shading again, but since that is seen throughout most of this fight, I will refrain from mentioning it further. Here we have a shot in which the style is quite controversial due to there being no line art. And of course, when I say it's controversial, I mean people on Twitter bitching and moaning about it. So who cares? I think this stylistic approach is perfect for this particular fight because at the end of the day, they are curses moving at immeasurable speeds. And as a plus, it looks cool in my humble opinion. Another thing I noticed as I was watching some of these shots back is how often the background goes black. I'm not 100% sure of what this is implying but my guess is that it was done to illustrate the destruction of Shibuya, but I could be completely wrong. The overall approach of this fight is very much outerworldly and extremely abstract, and I know that not everyone is gonna like this approach due to the very distorted character models and lack of complex shading, but as an animator, this is something that you look at and get inspired by, and not often does something like this come to happen. I just love how exaggerated this scene is. He's actually rotating the same way as the pencil Gojo was playing with in the hidden inventory arc. But seriously, this is super impressive impressive and illustrates the speed in which they are going. Just take a quick look at the background. Those are supposed to be the city lights. They're a complete blur. Beautiful debris animation here, followed up by the most iconic shot of the Blu-ray version of this fight. This right here is straight out of Mob Psycho 100. Yet again, no line art. We can see some very rough paint strokes that get more and more detailed as Sukuna is turning around. His face and body is completely distorted. And even when we go back to the normal art style, you can still see the same paint strokes using the stylized frames. Although this is amazing, I do have a tiny bit of criticism for this cut. I do wish that there was more follow through as it looks extremely rough when he puts out his hand. It just looks unnatural to me and bothered me a bit when I was first watching it. Of course, that's not to take away from the gorgeous drawings, but it's a quick little nitpicky critique of mine. This shot right here is just straight up insane. The animation of Sukuna is so lifelike and smooth. I genuinely cannot tell whether or not it was rotoscoped. I don't think so. But regardless, the movement is beyond impressive. I love how they're displaying the speed and intensity of the fight in so many different ways. They faded into Sukuna delivering a slash while we can still see his last pose, indicating to the viewer that this movement literally happened in a flash. The choreography of this fight is legit insane, but let's not forget about the OST. This shit is actually divine. I feel like I'm experiencing this fight myself, like I'm the one fighting Maharaga. Just, just me? Okay. Honestly, this looks more funny than anything, I'm not gonna lie, but look at how happy Sukuna looks. Man, if only I could be this happy. Hey, you can make me happy if you like and subscribe. Here we have a cut from an animation legend Vincent Chansard that was actually cut out from the original episode. The first person POV is absolutely insane. This features a lot of more shading and detail than the average shot of this episode, but it is the Vincent Chansard after all. Must I add, it's so cool to see his other shots undimmed and fully realized. It honestly gives me a lot more appreciation for the work the staff put into the show and showcases just how talented Vincent truly is. Like, this is just insane. Then of course, there is the flame arrow scene that looks completely different from the original. In the original, it looked a lot choppier than in the final version with a lot less detail too. Honestly, what MAPPA did to its animators and staff has to be some kind of war crime. <sighs> it's honestly saddening to know that if only the schedules were better, fans would get blessed with stuff like this more often, especially with the reach studio MAPPA has. There's so much talent at their disposal, yet they decide to waste it by overworking them, picking up more projects than they can handle, underpaying them, and much more bullshit that happens behind the scenes. If you want to learn more about that, I made an in-depth video regarding studio MAPPA that is up on the screen right now. Like, subscribe, and support the Patreon if you want.